Greetings and welcome to Monster Legends for another special feeding episode. This time I'm going to be feeding a lady I picked up in the Chaos Fortress maze. She was on the limited time path. And this is... Makugan. And Makugan is a, a legendary. Makugan is metal. Makugan has two open ruin slots. It's better than one open ruin slot, but, you know, not as good as three open ruin slots. We can work with that, though. Uh, Makugan is in the mechanical book. Uh, she's female, and of course she's a villain. All right, all those things do seem to apply. All right, so let's find her a place to go. Yes, the island seems like a very good idea. Okay, that looked very destructive. Maybe she does gardening. All right, so, okay, she's hiding there. Where, where is she here? Hold on a second. Okay, this is Beamy. Well, no, we're probably not going to call her Beamy. There's too far too much metal there to call her Beamy. All right, so this is Makugan. She is a legendary. She is metal. Okay, she is immune to stun, and she's immune to possession. Okay, so a little hard to control her, isn't it? All right, let's take a look at the stats. Uh, her strength is very good. Her life is pretty not bad. It's a little above normal there, a little above normal. Uh, speed's okay, but she does seem to be a damage dealer from that strength, which again, it's pretty darn high, so that's not so bad. Let's take a look at her initial skills. All right, we have the cutest slash, low physical damage to one enemy, and then we have laser targeting, deals moderate metal damage to one enemy, and that uh, very uh, dangerous looking special skill, Miko Strike removes positive stats effects from all enemies, applies metal weakness to all enemies, deals very heavy metal damage to all enemies, and applies nanovirus to all enemies. It does a lot of things to all enemies. Okay, so all enemies had better watch out. Okay, so those are all quite useful, and that is a very good uh, special skill. Makugan is a cyborg sent from the future to stop the lethality of Jakugan. However, will the presence of this monster stop the problem that is Jakugan, or will the remedy be worse than the problem itself? Has anyone thought that maybe Makugan's futuristic skills could break the balance in the present? Okay, well, maybe it can. Let's see if it will. All right, so let's start feeding her up to get to level four, and of course, her final form. Boom, there we go. Okay, lots of claws, lots of spikes. Okay, rather dangerous looking. Very dangerous looking. Let's find out how dangerous. So let's start going with the skills here. All right, let's start. Eight skills start at level seven. Indeflagable assassin. I'm so glad that's the first. That is a zero cooldown and a zero stamina skill. That's going to be very hard to get rid of, isn't it? Okay, I was kind of hoping I'd never see that one again because of that name, but I don't know about that. Wow, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, they're very rare you see something that's a zero zero, but not something that is that powerful. Okay, well, that's a good place to start. So let's go to level 10 and check out the next skill. Lithium Charge. Deals moderate metal damage to all enemies. Okay, that's that's a low stamina and zero cooldown. She's got a lot of zero cooldowns there. By the way, I do believe there's one too many T's there. Okay, is everything you're going to have got a zero cooldown? I'm not complaining, I'm just asking. All right, let's continue to level 15. Good things gone. Removes positive status effects from one enemy, deals moderate metal damage to one enemy. Okay, that is a one-round cooldown, but uh, that's kind of useful. So we're going to throw that right over there. All right, so let's continue to level 20. Bad things come. Removes positive status effects from one enemy, deals very heavy metal damage to one enemy, applies nanovirus to one enemy. Again, a lot of things to one enemy. Okay, well, think about it. Um, I don't think there's any chance of me ever keeping that one. I mean, zero, yeah, but it's not like that. You know what I mean? 
And besides, this thing is pretty good damage here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep that because there may be like a group version of that in the future, but for now. Just for now. All right, so let's continue to level 25. Iron Maiden. Deals moderate special damage to one enemy, applies nature weakness to one enemy, gives one extra turn to itself. Ooh, that's good. Um, yeah, all of a sudden I am um, sorry I put that down there now. All right, I think I'm going to put that there because it's low damage. It wouldn't surprise me if we get something uh, bigger than that. But you never know. I might want to keep that one because actually I'd be surprised if I didn't keep that one. It's damage. It gives metal weakness and then gives an extra turn. So then you could turn around and hit him with this one. All right, I'm going to put that there. Yeah, it might be hard to get rid of that one, even though she doesn't really seem to be having a cooldown problem at the moment. All right, so let's continue to level 30. Slice and Slash deals heavy metal damage to one enemy, applies bleed to one enemy. Yeah, I'm going to put that in the front for now just because I don't want to see it again. I don't know if I end up keeping that. We're going to have to see what her final spec is here. She's got a lot of interesting things, and I don't want to dispose any of them just yet. All right, so let's go. Got a couple more skills left, right? And 35. Enemies without benefits. Oh. Removes positive status effects from one enemy. Deals insane metal damage to one enemy. Applies nanovirus to all enemies. All right. Did I have one that was giving nanovirus? That one. Is there any reason? No, there isn't. Because that is literally an upgrade. It's got the same requirements. It's just a bigger hit. And it gives nanovirus to everybody. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason why I would want to do that. Okay, so let's continue. We have two more left. All right, level 40. Blades Queen. Deals moderate metal damage to all enemy, applies bleed to all enemies. Yeah, I was thinking there might be something like that. I mean, this one does more damage, but this, of course, hits everybody and gets everybody bleeding. So, yeah, definitely. Perhaps one more? I'm guessing we probably have one more. So let's see. Bad things come. All right, so that was good. We just got the better version of that, that's all. And let's continue to level 50. Reflective Camouflage deals heavy special damage to one enemy, applies nature weakness to all enemies, and evasion to itself. Ooh, that's, that's tricky there, isn't it? All right, let's think about this. I'm not going to part with that one, right? I mean, that one's pretty good, and it gives nanovirus to everybody, and it's insane metal damage. This one is the extra turn. The extra turn is just so useful, you know? And it's a good hit. It is, and it gives... Na See, this one here gives nature weakness to everybody, and then it gives evasion, too. You know what it would mean? It would mean getting rid of this. Oh. I mean, that is just so useful. I want it all. I do. I want it all. I mean, the evasion, doing this and giving, giving the metal weakness to everybody and then evasion, which means, you know, a lot of times when you have somebody who makes something weak, the next round, they can't pull the trigger on it because something happened. So if you do this one, reflective camouflage, and then you come back and say, then do this one, which is going to do the moderate metal damage, and then the bleeding on top of that, and with her strength, that's going to do a lot of damage. So, I mean, that is just, you got to take reflective camouflage. You know, you just have to take it, right? The question is, what do I part with? Do I part with this, which is basically cooldown activation protection? Also, it's also protection against, say, a General Thetis or somebody who takes stamina away from you. Because you can always use this one. And it's a really good hit, too. And with her strength, it's going to do a lot of damage. That's more damage. Oh, this is torture. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I have to get rid of this one. As long as I keep this one, you know, there's never going to be a problem with being able to act, right? So I'm thinking that this is just the way I want it. I think that, I see that as part of a combo right there. You do reflective camouflage, and then you do Blades Queen, 
Or if there's one individual you really want to get rid of, you could do this since they're already weak to metal, right? All right, but I think that's the one I'm going to do with that. Okay, and I do believe that's probably all of her skills. So let's just get her to 60 and then we'll just go take a look just in case. Okay, Iron Maiden. Put her in the Iron Maiden. Excellent! All right, and that's the single target bleed and uh, metal damage. All right, let's just take a quick look, even though I'm pretty darn sure we didn't miss anything. All right, that was the uh, the single target that gives the uh, nanovirus. That's the one we got rid of with the extra turn. Would have been nice to work that in, but I just can't see getting rid of anything that I have. Yeah, one too many T's there. Okay, so let's take a look at her stats. And yeah, that's a really good strength. Life? You know, for a damage dealer, that's, that's above normal. That's not so bad. Her speed's not bad. Not bad at all. Considering you do have a combo going here for her, too, there might be a consideration for speed. Because she's going to give the, the metal weakness, she's going to be evading, but then she wants to come back and follow up on it. All right, well, let's take a look at the, um, the skills that I selected and uh, figure out what we're going to do with her, right? All right, this is Blade's Queen. Deals moderate metal damage to all enemies, applies bleed to all enemies. Okay, bleed is the torture effect, and it's a good torture effect. The two-round cooldown's not bad, considering the bleeding will basically just... You can just keep them bleeding perpetually, in other words, right? So that's, that's actually pretty good. Now this one here is going to make the first skill better. This is Reflective Camouflage. Deals heavy special damage to one enemy, applies nature weakness to all enemies, and then gets evasion which means it's going to attack one enemy, make everybody weak to metal, and then it's going to evade so you can't do anything about it, unless, of course, you like remove passive status effects. What that means is that she's now prone to come back with either a group attack, this one here, right, which is now going to do double damage and uh, you know, bleeding as well, or, and actually it could be an end too, it's a matter of which would you want to do. You could just say reach for something like this, which, of course, is insane damage, but then I'm jumping ahead of myself here, right? This is one you gotta take, right? You gotta take it, because all of her other attacks are metal, and you're making them or everybody else weak to metal, and she's gonna be able to do that because she's gonna be evading. So unless they can remove positive status effects, they're gonna be in trouble in the next round. All right, let's move on to this one. Indefigable Assassin. I have no idea. I was hoping I wouldn't keep this one, but I can't let go of it. It's just too good. All right, deals very heavy metal damage to one enemy. It sounds very like, well, that's kind of middle of the road. Yeah, but I mean, it has a zero stamina cost and a zero cooldown, which means she can always use it. This is somebody, remember, who is immune to stun and immune to possession. So she's going to be able to use this. If you uh, activate her cooldowns, she's going to use this. If you take away her stamina, she's going to use this. She always has something she can do. You're never going to catch her like, oh, she's going to have to charge this round. No, she's not. No, she can do this. And this isn't just a hit. It's a very heavy metal damage hit. So the fact that this came in as her first skill is kind of amazing. But you can't part with this. It's just too useful. If somebody tries to shut her down with one of those two things, cooldowns, well, she's going to make them pay for it, isn't she? Even though this is kind of like her weakest com uh, attack, that one and that one I think are the same, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the group attack is a little bit less. But still, I mean, that is just too useful. And then we have this one. Enemies without benefits. Removes positive stats effects from one enemy, deals insane mental damage to one enemy, applies nanovirus to all enemies. And of course, what nanovirus is a torture effect that will block new positive stats effects. The monster that has this can't have any positive stats effects added at that point. It won't remove ones that currently exist, but it will block any while it's actually going. So that's actually pretty good. And that will also, like I said, work really well with this. I mean, if there's one thing you really need to kill on the screen, you can do this, weakness, evade, and then come back with this and just hammer them really hard. So, wow, she's got some really good stuff here, and she is going to be a very good damage dealer. You know, I've been kind of waiting for somebody who uh, 
made me like, okay, yeah, I want to do a testing video now because I really want to see this one. I think I found the damage dealer for the team now because I have a couple of individuals. I have a tank, I have like a supporty person, and now I have a damage dealer. And I think that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, this is Makugan. And, oh, that reminds me. What about, uh, yeah, like I was leading on for a moment ago. First of all, she's got a great strength. She's got damaging skills. You need damage. I'm going to put two damages on her. But, you know, instead of a, a support, um, I should say a group speed, I, I would put a speed on her because she does benefit from that. The fact that she can make them weak to metal means that you want her to come back as quickly as possible to attack. Unlike other damage dealers who just do their big hit and then they do their next big hit and then they do their next big hit, that kind of thing. In that case, that individual doesn't require personal speed. But I think she benefits from that because she's got the nature weakness, pardon me, the metal weakness. And she can actually take advantage of that. So I would like her attacking as much as possible. So I am going to put two uh, damages on her and then a speed. Not a group speed, a personal speed. So that's what I'm planning for her. Like I was saying, this is Makugan and she is really good. I can't actually wait to see her in action. So maybe that'll be very soon. So anyway, thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate it. And play games because games are fun. See ya.